And our first guest tonight is a very funny woman who has two Emmys, a Grammy, and whatever award they give out for making Anderson Cooper uncomfortable. Her 80 city Like a Boss tour marches on Friday night at the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. <laughs> coming. I, we called you like this afternoon. Halle you called Berry me this canceled. afternoon. Halle Berry hurt her back and <laughs> I'm here to make it all better. Now look, I don't know what Halle's doing, but I'm in the middle of an 80 city tour. 80 cities, Jimmy. Think about it. That's 80. a lot of cities. It's like a third of them. That's I know, so I don't want to hear you whine about how hard this show is. Well, well, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> Screw you, Kimmel. 80 cities. 80 cities with the like a boss. We got Carnegie Hall. We have the Mark Tate Perform. We have the, you know, Horseshoe Casino in Elizabeth, Indiana. I'm going to the real America. <laughs> Not like you with your high and mighty California ways. That's true. I stay right here, and America comes to us, really, yes. is what happens. Hold on. I'm sorry. I forgot yes. to ask you. How could I forget? So, how much did you love the Bette Midler concert three weeks ago? I did. By the way, I know you make fun as if I would never go to that, but I absolutely wanted to go to that, but I was not in town at that time. Really? Yes. You buy this? <laughs> um, can't fool me, my friend. I... Okay, did you so... Go to, you went to it. Oh, did your boyfriend go to this with you as well? Yes, uh -huh. my genuine heterosexual boyfriend went. <laughs> and here is what I want to say in light of the SCOTUS decision regarding equality, etc. I will just be honest, my boyfriend's a great guy. I found it unacceptable. He could not list one single Bette Midler song before that concert. Wow. And I said to him, if you do not sob during Wind Beneath My Wings, no <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, yes, I took him to the concert. By the way, can you name three Bette Midler songs? Well, uh, there's Go. The Rose. Yeah. There's Wind Beneath My Wings. All right. Um, I know she sang back up on Beast of Burden. Okay, not just, uh, you know what? That's so, What? That's pretty good. What a, it's Come okay. On. It's okay. It's Hashtag good. equality. So <laughs> I take him to the Bette Midler show. I, all right, I drag him to the Bette Midler show. Uh -huh. And it's a fantastic show. And I sat among the people. I wasn't like you in the skybox. In the celebrity what sky What happened? Box. Beth didn't give you good seats? No, I wanted to be up front because she doesn't lip sync. She's like a real deal performer. Up front is, is among the people? It's is... among the people, even with my fame. Even what with my fame. What people were you among? I don't know. People that aren't famous. And so <laughs> I was sitting there and, you know, I took a few selfies with the fans, uh -huh. what have you. Uh -huh. But then I heard a sound that can only be described as a, a gay thunder, a gay <laughs> sound. It was when she walked down the aisle past me to take her seat, three rows ahead of me. Her name is Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and Jimmy, you have never seen anything like it. It was like a gay Cirque du Soleil, just gay men flying with their cell phones, old Jewish ladies flying to get just a look at the Streisand. Now, so tell, the, tell so me. So the common people you were sitting among are- We all lost it. We all lost Barbara it. Barbara Streisand only one. is the There's common one. person that you're- Okay, first of all, how many times has Barbara Streisand been on this show? No, none. Exactly. <laughs> so you and your little friend Oprah can suck it because- <laughs> I will say, do not underestimate, like, you guys think you party, okay? I get it. Do not underestimate the level of partying with middle-aged gay men and old Jewish ladies. <laughs> because when they saw Streisand, I mean, there was this lady who just went up to Barbara Streisand, of all people, videotaping her with an iPad, just going, Barbara, sing! Sing! Oh, no. Do a song! And let me, no. let me tell you, Barbara doesn't roll that way, no. all right? She did not enjoy that moment. Who would enjoy that moment, I really? Mean, not Barbara Streisand, but it was exciting to see her. It sounds like it was a lot of fun for yes. Barbara. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, your friend, my mom Maggie, turned 95 oh. on June 10th. Oh, wow. Please tell her I said hello. 95, yeah. Well, 
she, you know, she doesn't care for you. I know she doesn't like me. No, but she feels yeah. she doesn't care for Jimmy because she feels that <laughs> you should not have Britney on because my mom feels that you know Britney is fragile and yet you still force her to come on this show. Okay, she was on like nine years ago. Whatever. I, what? Yeah. Oh, you think Maggie forgets? <laughs> anyway, it was Maggie's birthday, and so for her 95th, being a wonderful daughter, I said. We'll do whatever you want. You're an American treasure. You're the best mom I could want. And she said, I want to go to dinner on the Sunset Strip, and I want to see one celebrity. <laughs> we went to dinner, she's 95, 5 p.m. Nice. That was before the staff was even there. So we had to, like, help them. You know, it was me and the bar back. And so we had to help them set up. And we were right on the sidewalk. And I had cousins from Chicago, so my mom was trying to show off all the celebrities. And the star bus kept coming by and going, we have comedian Kathy Griffin, Kathy Griffin. And I'm waving, and my mom just kept, damn it, not one celebrity. <laughs> Oh, that's Happy birthday, Mom! <laughs> yeah, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Right in the afternoon. We're going to take a break. Kathy Griffin is with us. You can see her all this summer on tour. Like a boss, with Kathy Griffin, oh, yes. who is uh, playing Carnegie Hall, who's playing the Mark, Mark Taper Forum, Mark Mirage, Taper Forum. everywhere. But I'm going to be honest, you know, there are places that I play that are really in the middle of nowhere, and so I have a new habit I thought you would enjoy. You know that I am on a mission to end all sports. Yes, you, all you're sports. not a sports fan. They have to go. It's just got to be Liza, Liza, Liza. No more sports. <laughs> and so for fun, I now, if I'm on the road uh, with my boyfriend, I will call into sports radio talk shows as a character <laughs> and act like I know what I'm talking about, and I know nothing about sports. <laughs> but I'm obsessed with these shows because I can't believe these morons that call in over and over. So I was in Cleveland and they were in a basketball contest. Uh, and yeah, everybody was very about excited about it. <laughs> and then um, I was somewhere outside Chicago uh -huh. and there was this really um, super, not highlight, um, no, the definitely. Blackhawks with a yeah, hockey, hi, hockey. Hi, yeah. hockey contest that right. people were like freaking out about. <laughs> so my new thing is to call into like, like <laughs> the local um, news, um, the local sports radio talk. So my character's name is Francine. Okay. And so my boyfriend said, you have to drop the knowledge. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, you, you, means you have are, to know what you're talking about. You well, I don't. It's ridiculous that you end. <laughs> so anyway, I call, and it's always like, Mad Dog and Boomy Lombardi, what's up? <laughs> hey, yeah, Mad Dog, Mad I called in one show that was called Mad Dog and Sean. <laughs> it's Mad Dog and Sean. We got, we got Francine out of the phone. She's a diehard Cavs fan. So I called during, um, I called during that contest, and I said, uh, I didn't know what I was talking about, of course. And so I said, um, uh, hey, what are you doing, Francine? Uh, first time caller, a long time listener and I just want to say that King James is gonna take it in a sweep sweep and uh, the Cavaliers are great and coach Kerr would give us right arm to have King James and they're gonna beat the um and then I forgot the name of the other team I go they're gonna beat the other that that team they're playing that's like in the oh it's like the Bay Area it's like they have a lot of musicals and they hung up on me <laughs> they did yeah because you know I don't know if you know this but you know I was in radio for a long time and oh, when that's sports... where we met of course I know. When a sports, but when a sports radio talk show gets a woman caller, it's like there's a parade that goes I on. I get on every time. Yeah, of course, every time that's I right. call. So I called in during the um, hockey excitement contest, yeah. and I go, um, uh, hey, it's me, Francine. I'm a longtime Hawks fan, and you know what? Uh, my boyfriend is named Stanley, Stanley Cup. He's coming back to Chicago. The Tampa Bay Lightning is a franchise team. That's not even a real team to me. I want to bring it back to the days of the Esposito brothers. Those were the days when a little girl named Francine was outside the Chicago Stadium. I want that Stanley Cup. I'm not letting Justin Bieber anywhere near it this year. <laughs> Am I getting better? Yeah, not really, no. What? Well, you had some things wrong, but... What are you talking it's about? All right. It's I'm all right, it's all right. I'm a form of sports expert. <laughs> well, you're doing well. Whatever it is, you're forming a bond with your boyfriend that... I'm trying I'm to understand the heteros. I'm sure he appreciates, and then he yes. goes to Bette Midler with you. He went to Gaga. He, he met Lady Gaga <laughs> two weeks ago backstage at the Hollywood Bowl. You realize that if you succeed in your mission, with yeah. your boyfriend, eventually you're going to turn him gay, and oh then there won't God. be a relationship Fingers between crossed. you anymore. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Kathy Griffin, everybody. Go see the Like a Lost Comedy Tour Friday night at the Mirage in London.
Las Vegas. We'll be right back with Rob Bergley.